Now, it's a tiny market, but one with enormous potential, from edible worms to the giant rhino beetle grub. Well, Singapore is betting that insects could be the next big source of protein. Rules and regulations are coming soon around their sale and import, and it's got bug companies all the buzz, as Chloe Chu finds out. Crickets, anyone? It might come as a surprise that each of these little critters is 65% protein. That means eating 100 grams of it would check off 65 grams of pure protein from your daily meal plan. That's more than twice what you would get out of a similar serving of chicken breast. And that golden ratio is what alternative protein companies are banking on. New laws in the works to regulate insects for human consumption in Singapore means Yuvanesh TS can bring his cricket powder, currently only available for sale in Europe, to market here. So we looked at the snack market because there's always that perception that snacks are not very healthy. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of people doing good things in that space. And we thought with edible insects being high in protein and other uh, you know, vitamins and minerals, we can also create products that are nutritious but still tasty. The company already has recipes for cookies and brownies using its special ingredient. Next up, cricket smoothie with banana, peanut butter and honey. Mostly the similar ingredients that anyone would use to make a smoothie, but the only thing different is that we're going to use an edible insect or cricket powder. Right. Yeah. How does that smell? It smells a little bit earthy. But not really, not much of a smell. The most common feedback is it's a very nutty, earthy flavour. Mm. Yeah. Alright, cheers. cheers. How's it this? You wouldn't even know yeah. it's insect protein inside. It tastes like any other smoothie that I have which, tried. And just by adding cricket powder in its powder form, mm. instead of its whole form, which people tend to find more off-putting. Yeah, it's a lot more acceptable. Yeah, okay. And that holds huge promise for them and their supplier, homegrown cricket farm Future Protein Solutions in Lim Chu Kang. You are looking at um, how traditionally cricket farm um, you know, grow crickets. That over there is okara, and this is dried fish trimming, so basically um, raw fish meal. Okay. And what I have here is um, durian husk. Dried, durian husk. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Farmer Nick Muhammad says it's harvest season now, and these crickets are ready to be frozen, boiled, cleaned, and dried. To do that more efficiently, the farm is eyeing nearly full automation as it scales up operations. We've seen how the traditional method of farming works, but this is how it'll look like in the future. With a vertical layout to save space in land scarce Singapore, and automation to feed and harvest the crickets so less manpower is needed, Future Protein Solutions says this will boost efficiency by more than 50%. The labour is the biggest cost for production, so we're trying to automate the feeding process by working with technologies that will help us to feed it automatically, using robotics to do that. Um, and we're also incorporating machine learning and artificial intelligence to help us to understand the cricket's behaviour. It helps that crickets can be farmed both indoors and outdoors and do not require much maintenance. And insects are also considered a safer source of protein. The interesting thing about insects is that so far there are no real allergies. People find like you could be allergic to chicken, you could have problems with beef. And look, you need to have a really good digestive system to be able to digest those bigger protein sources. So if you're looking at it from a health perspective, in terms of antibiotics, preservatives, that kind of a route where, you know, you want to avoid those typical things. Actually, insects is a really great choice. A viable choice, it seems, to help feed Singapore's goal of producing 30% of its food locally by 2030. The government is currently working on laws around the sale and import of insect protein for human consumption. It's chewing on a list of 16 edible insects, including locusts and grasshoppers, mealworms and silkworms, beetles and bees. 
Well, let's go for another bite of this uh, story with our next guest, Professor William Chen. He's director of the Food Science and Technology Program at NTU, and he speaks to us from Kuala Lumpur. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, Professor. It sounds really promising, insects as protein of the future. But tell us, in terms of getting the best bang for my buck, you know, what are some of the best bugs in terms of their protein value? We've heard about crickets and we've you know, heard about these uh, worms. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me here on the program. So, uh, as we know, there are about uh, one million different species of insect in the nature, and around two hundred, two thousand of them are actually considered edible insects. So, actually, although there are thousands, tens of thousands of uh, insects, not all are edible. Uh, as we have seen on the program, we we mainly focus on these uh, mealworms, uh, cricket, and uh, um, these uh, grasshoppers as uh, species that we can consider for insect farming and to consider as our alternative uh, protein sources. Yes. And uh, if we talk about the nutrition value, some of these uh, edible insects, so to speak, are high in protein and the low in carbohydrate. So, and, and they are also uh, rich in the poly and saturated. Uh, lipid, therefore they are considered very healthy. In terms of proportion uh, of the protein content in the edible insect, we can easily talk about 50 to 60 percent of the protein content from most of these edible insects. Therefore, the the nutrition value is uh, tend to be very high. Mm. So from what I'm at, you're saying, Professor, it, it seems like, you know, a lot of it uh, is, is great moving forward. You know, it's got a lot of stuff going for it. Um, but when you talk about consuming insects, you know, what would you say is the biggest challenge or, or the biggest downside um, that would, you know, stop this from becoming a big thing? Right. So there are a number of points for consideration when you talk when we talk about insect farming as a, a urban solution to help us uh, overcome the constraint of uh, uh, food supply in Singapore in particular. First one is uh, the scale up. So when we talk about the insect farming, uh, we typically talking about uh, setting up uh, um, the infrastructure. And uh, here, uh, this is uh, something rather new to 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 all of us. To all of us, so we talk about the need for automation, and then we we also need to talk about the uh, although insect farming tend to be uh, environmentally friendly in terms of uh, uh, water usage, and then the the land use uh, use the the land needed for insect farming because we can actually grow insect. Uh, in the vertical way, so the 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 land needed for insect farming is uh, uh, much lower compared to agriculture and the uh, and the uh, livestock farming. Uh, but there's a uh, uh, not all is uh, uh, what we wish to be. Uh, we talk about, for example, energy consumption. Not all insect farming uh, consume very little energy. Uh, that's because some of the insects, edible insects, are, are cold blooded. Uh, for example, we talk about mealworms. We we may need to consider heating up the the sort of uh, uh, inside farm so that uh, they can grow normally. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of these uh, uh, consideration that we we need to um, put into the design and planning of the inside farm. Yeah, and uh, uh, maybe another remote risk of insect farming is that uh, some of these, in case of uh, leakage, some of these uh, farm insect may may escape from the farm and then the, go to the nature. That may or may not have uh, impact on the biodiversity in the nature. So all these are some of the considerations we should uh, think of. Um, Professor, what then do you think um, in terms of the potential of insects um, beyond just serving as a food source, you know, giving us all that protein? Uh, let's just talk about black soldier flies. We believe they're used to tackle food waste. Um, anything else? Well, uh, so when we talk about the insect farming, uh, obviously the substrate um that we what, what we feed inside is uh, actually a, a key consideration uh i would say that the inside like uh, like uh, like is like us we 
we are what we eat. So likewise, if we we feed the insect, uh, uh, you know, household food waste, there 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 may be consequences depending on how we make use of this uh, insect after farming. Uh, if we say that the, uh, for example, the black soldier fly, if we feed them with household food waste, uh, although they can digest these household food waste, but they will also accumulate the heavy metal, salt, or kind of other toxin, for example, in the insect. So if we, we go directly uh, channel this uh, black soldier fly to consumer food, then we need to really make sure that uh, at the safety uh, risk assessment level, uh, all is uh, clear and clean. But uh, as we also know that the insect farming will have other uh, useful applications, for example, biomedical application uh, that we can take out the chitin from the insect exoskeleton and then be used into a uh, biomedical application. So if we are, uh, so there are a number of uh, uh, considerations we need to see whether the edible insect that we uh, from the insect farming will be used as a consumer food or as uh, animal feed or as biomedical application. So the risk assessment level will vary uh, uh, depending on the uh, type of applications. So for uh, like for example, when we talk about overall insect farming, uh, the substrate that we we need to consider should be clean for a start and the homogeneous. So we we saw in the just now the the report, people use, uh, for example, soybean residue from the food processing industry. That is a very good uh, starting point because uh, we can control the condition, uh, cleanliness of this substrate. So, and, and then we are also uh, more certain that uh, this uh, insect coming out of this uh, insect farming will also be much cleaner than, than the, if we feed anything from the environment. Well, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for filling us in on this topic of insect food. I'm really excited to try it. I'm not sure about my colleague, John, but uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Professor William Chen, Director of Food Science and Technology Program at the NTU.